If you're confused about bridge trimming and whether or not you should do it, then you're definitely not alone. I'm planning to do an experiment in these two Arrow Garden Sprouts to see the difference that root trimming can make positive or negative, because in my five years of growing hydroponically, I've never done it. If you're new around here, then hi, I'm Kiri. I'm a micro homesteader. And on this channel, we look at all things from growing indoors hydroponically to outdoors in the garden and finding ways that we can become more self-sufficient and reduce our reliance on the grocery store. So what I've been seeing online, people either swear by root trimming or they haven't tried it. So up to this point, I'm in the haven't tried it bunch. And so I love good experiment. I really need a better background. This is a boring white wall. I'll work on that but root trimming. So I've been growing hydroponically for about five years and I have never done it. Now there are definitely people that swear by it. Um, and the more I see it, the more I think, well, is it good? Like, I feel like cutting the roots, like, is that gonna hurt the plant? I don't know. Definitely one of the things that it helps prevent is the roots getting stuck in the pumps. The roots can get massive sometimes to the point where it can actually be hard to remove the plants from the grow decks when you go to take them out, when, especially if you're just cleaning out a garden. So I can see the point of it, I think. But I need to know for myself if it's gonna hurt the plants or if maybe I've been missing out on something for years. So I have some seeds. I am going to do the Paris Island cause a nice romaine lettuce. It's actually one of the free seeds that I got from Baker Creek, which is where I get all of my heirloom seeds from. And the fact that you get a free one, I just like that, it's a little extra. And it also gives you a chance to try different things you may not have tried. So love these guys. I'll put the link down below to them. I'm also going to try some of these garlic chives. They are from Victory Seeds. And I thought these are both pretty quick growing and they weren't gonna take up a huge amount of space because I'm going to do them in the sprouts, which are not the biggest of arrow gardens to grow in, but I thought these would be quick growing and we could kind of just compare and the lettuce I'm gonna eat and the garlic chives, I'll end up moving them outside into the garden in the spring. So win-win. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna plant the same thing at the same time, both arrow gardens, and then do nothing different between them other than trim the roots on one and not on the other. And then we'll see what we end up with. Not exactly the most scientific of experiments, but it's an experiment nonetheless. I will learn something from this. Hopefully you will learn something from this and we can both decide if root trimming is for us, but at least we'll have some sort of comparison and information to go by, which is better than just winging it. I would rather learn on a small scale with this experiment in the sprouts than suddenly jump in and trim the roots on all my plants and then realize I might've made a mistake. Now, all this is really gonna tell us is if root trimming works with the lettuce and the chives, but hopefully it still gives us some more information. And along the way, we'll all learn about how to trim the roots because I'm gonna do a bunch of research and compare a whole bunch of different sites and different blog posts and just go read whatever I can. And then we'll put that into practice and see where we end up. It's exciting. I always love starting new seeds. So we have the seeds. I have the baskets. Well, I have two baskets. I need a couple more. I don't know what I do with them. I think I use them for something else. I'll, I will go find two more baskets and two more sponges. I get the Grow Anything ones. I buy them in bulk because I use an awful lot of them. I'll put the links to the ones that I use down below and mine are always empty because I have way too many seeds and I always like to use my own because I'm an heirloom seed snob. And then the other thing that I have, and I just got these. I actually kind of like them. I mean, they're pretty basic. They're just the little green um, stickers that go on top to help keep the light out. But up until I got these, I had the old school iron-on ones, which then you need an iron. Yeah, they're a pain in the butt. The one thing I did notice though with the stickers is they are a lot thinner. So when I used to use the iron-on ones or the ones I think they're still using for the preceded pods, I don't use them. So I, I'm just making an assumption here. But when I would put the grow domes on, they would kind of get snug and they wouldn't move around too much. With these new ones, because the stickers are so much thinner, the grow domes are much looser. It doesn't really make a huge difference. It was just something that I noticed when I switched over to the stickers. So I have everything I need now. Four baskets and four sponges. So I'm going to put two lettuce seeds in each of the lettuce baskets and we will get those in. I think I'm gonna put the lettuce at the front and I will put the chives at the back. I'll show you in a second when I get these all done and then we will pop them into the arrow garden and then we will wait. And then I will come back in a few weeks 
and we'll see how things are doing. Basically, my plan is to kind of pop in every week or two, give you guys an update on how things are growing, and we'll kind of look at the roots, make a decision on when we're gonna start cutting the roots, and how we're gonna cut the roots, and on what frequency we would be cutting the roots. And I'll show you how the harvest is going along the way, and I'm gonna try as much as possible to keep everything the same that I'm doing between the units so that we see what the effects are. First, we will do the lettuce. And lettuce seeds are super tiny. Just pouring out a few seeds is hard. Okay, there we go. So I have four seeds. So in the first one, two of the seeds, I don't know if you can see, and I'm gonna carefully drop them in. I think they went in there. They went in, I dumped them out to check. So we're gonna do it all over again now. There we go. I saw them both go in that time. And then just carefully popping them in there. You always wanna make sure that the sponge is kind of sitting down at the bottom, especially in the sprout units, because the sprout units do not have the water that comes from above, they are just gonna absorb from the bottom. So you wanna make sure that the sponge is getting wet. So I'm going to pop that in the front of the one unit. I'll flip the camera in a second as soon as I get these in. I don't have enough hands to do it any other way. Now we will do the chives. I have never tried garlic chives and I haven't used from Victory Seeds before. So we'll see how these go. I'm always excited to find another company. All right, so we got lots of seeds in there. I'm gonna do two of these. Well, same as I did the two for the lettuce. Save these for later. I'm trying to not drop the seeds that are in my head. I'm just gonna do that afterwards. Basket that in there, and I'm gonna put it in. I still need to put the stickers on, so I haven't forgotten about that. But I just wanna get all of these into the pod so I don't miss any and lose any seeds. So that is the chives done. And now I'm gonna flip the camera. So there they are. We have the lettuce in the front. The sponges are kind of floating. Oh, there, poke them down. They tend to do that when they first go in. The ones in the back are okay. Because I'm not using all the holes, I am using my Aero Garden covers. You definitely do not need to use the Aero Garden covers. You can use golf balls or anything else. You just want to make sure that you are blocking the light. That is the most important thing. I just like the covers. I don't know. I just wanted to try them out because if people are asking me about them, I'd like to be able to give an opinion. I like that they fit in snugly. They don't really move around. If I'd had golf balls, I probably would have used that. So talking about blocking the light, I am just gonna move the camera because I need an extra set of hands so I can put on the stickers. Anytime you're growing hydroponically, it is super important to make sure that you are not letting any extra light in because you're gonna have a good chance of getting algae when you have light, nutrients, and water. And we have all three in a hydroponic system. So what we need to do is remove one of them from the equation. In this case, the light is the easiest thing to keep out, which is why we want to use the covers and the labels that go on. So we're limiting the amount of light getting in. There's a little hole, obviously, because the plant needs to come out somewhere, but the entire grow deck is sealed. We reduce the amount of light getting in and hopefully then don't run into an algae issue. Got some grow domes. All we're gonna do is we're going to pop those on top. Each of these grow domes will stay in place until the plants are getting close to the top. You do not want them to touch because that can lead to burning the leaves. They're just there at the beginning to help them all get started. I don't have these guys plugged in because then the water makes a lot of noise, but I'll plug it in now. I will be checking back in a week. Okay, so it's been about two weeks and we've got some growth going on. I have taken off all of the domes because they were getting close to touching. The lights are flashing above on both units, so these guys are in need of some nutrients. And I don't know if you can hear that, but it sounds like they need some water. You see, the water's actually not even that low, but we'll go ahead and top them up and then we'll take a look at what's going on with the roots. But before I top them up, I'm going to give them some nutrients in this extremely gungy looking bottle. So far, I'm just using the Aero Garden nutrients, but I am gonna be trying out some other ones in the future, but for now, we're using this. So because this is the sprout, and then I will do the one cap full in each, and then we'll top off the water. One in there. And then we will do one in here, add some water in there. So I needed more than I thought, which would probably explain why it was so loud. So now that everything has quieted down, take a look at the roots. Still just some baby roots there. We're not gonna worry about doing any trimming or anything just yet. Like I said, these guys are only two weeks old. I'll show you this little guy. He's a little bit behind, even though I planted everything at the same time. So I'll see you guys in a couple more weeks. 
So today's the day, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna cut some roots. So I've been doing a lot of digging about the root trimming. And word on the street is that it is a great way to really kind of get in the habit of checking on the health of your roots. Because if you're looking at them to potentially trim them, you're looking at them. One of the big things that can be a problem when you're growing hydroponically is getting root rot or other issues happening with your roots. And if you're not looking at them on a consistent basis, you're probably not gonna notice until things are going really, really bad and you start to see the effects in the upper parts of the plant. So by getting in the habit of looking at our roots, we can better deal with and prevent other issues. Healthy roots are going to be white and smooth and not slimy at all. Unhealthy roots are going to be discolored and they're gonna look slimy. And sometimes literally if you pick up the plant, they're just gonna fall off. How do I know? Because I've had some root rot before. We don't want that. So it is possible that the roots can get discolored by the nutrients that you're using, but they should still look healthy. They shouldn't be slimy. And it's a mild discoloration. Like if you've got root rot, you know you've got root rot. The other thing that can happen to the roots is you can get some gray mold. All of that is bad and hard to recover from, especially if you're new to growing hydroponically and you maybe don't have as many things in your tool chest to draw on. I've seen other people swear by using hydrogen peroxide in their water. That is a whole other video. We're not gonna delve into that one right now. I'm gonna turn the camera around and then we'll take a look at the health of my roots. As I said, it's been about a month. The lettuce has already grown quite a bit. We've actually harvested a little bit. We had some last night for our dinner. And one of the plants, I was trying to keep it as close as I could for the experiment. Turns out one of them has two plants in it and one of them has one plant in it, but I can't do anything about that now. We've already agreed that this is not a scientific experiment. This is just kind of a seeing the difference kind of thing and learn a little bit along the way. So we'll just have to roll with it. So it's been a month, things have escalated, things have changed, and we got some root trimming to do. And today's the day we pick up these gorgeous little pruners and hack away at some roots. No, we're not gonna hack away, but you know, today's the day. So there are the beauties and my lovely Ikea setup. This, I'm proud of people. That looks like something out of a magazine. The rest is more like just seeds. This is the one that had the one in it. And this guy over here has two plants, but that's okay. And if we look down here, we can see a lot of roots going on in both of them. So this one is going to be the sacrificial lamb that will have its roots trimmed. And I am gonna go ahead and take this guy out as soon as I find somewhere to put the camera and we'll see what we are dealing with. All right, so it's important to have a good, clean, sharp pair of snips. These ones are actually brand new. I just bought them. I'll put the link down below, but I think they're pretty. They're also pretty sharp and we want to keep them clean. If I was going to be root trimming both of them, I would not trim the roots on this one and then jump straight into trimming the roots on this one. I would have to sterilize these before using them on another plant. The same goes if you're pruning out in the garden. You never go from plant to plant because if one has a disease or some issues, you could very easily spread it to the other plant. Also, because we are gonna to be touching the roots and stuff, I am going to go wash my hands always better to err on the side of caution. We don't want to introduce any bacteria or anything into the roots because we're actually trying to prevent that by checking on the roots and having and doing the root trimming. Okay, so here, see? I cannot even get this bad boy out because the roots are so big. Luckily, this is a sprout, so the grow deck is easier to get out. It just means it's going to be a bit messier and I'm actually gonna relocate this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unplug it and I will move us to another location where I'm not going to make a mess all over the brand new bookcase. Okay, so we are better situated now and I can actually show you what I'm talking about. So I've disconnected the pump um, from the power supply, which makes this a lot easier to move. And then if we can very carefully take off the grow deck, yeah, that's what's going on. First thing I'm noticing is it's caught around the pump. Not bad, it's not in the pump. I'm just gonna carefully tease that away, move this out of the way. The roots do look healthy. They are white, they are not discolored. I'm going to carefully tease apart these plants. Definitely the lettuce is the bigger one. So you can see the chive roots versus the lettuce roots. So another reason uh, that I've seen for trimming the hydroponic roots is because it's kind of a direct injection with having the nutrient solution right in the water, the plants don't need as many roots. 
and that's why it's okay to be able to to trim them now the general rule of thumb seems to be don't trim more than a third of the roots which seems like a good number for me much easier to judge here on the chives where it's just coming straight down i'm only going to give them a little snip down at the bottom so another thing to keep in mind is you don't want to trim anywhere near the root crown which is pretty much where all the roots are coming from right at the top one of the benefits of growing in an arrow garden or in a rise garden is you're not going to get anywhere near the crown because the crown is in the plug that is good and that gives you a bit more protection but still err on the side of caution with this you are cutting pieces off the plant so oh my god these things are nice we'll just do a little trim some people i've seen do it and they call it in i think with the lettuce the haircut method where you just kind of go across the top or you can do more of a trim i'm trying to do it more at a trim like round the edges and trim each root rather than just doing a straight cut across but it's up to you there's kind of what i've taken off of the chive all right so we have done the roots on the chives and then before i'm going to do anything on the lettuce I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol and we are going to just give the blades a look at. So I put a little bit on there, put the blades on and just give them a little wipe just to make sure that they're sterilized. Okay, now we can trim some lettuce roots. One of the other things when you're root trimming is you're going to want to trim anything that's looking dead or diseased. So if you did have anything that looked like the root rot where there was the brown and discolored roots, try and get off as much as you can of that because you don't want it spreading to other healthy roots, assuming there are some healthy roots left. If there's any roots that look dried out, you want to get rid of those and uh, anything that's not looking white and smooth. You should be able to touch them. These things are not slimy in the least. The only problem with this one is these ones had kind of grown right to the bottom. You can kind of see the shape of the grow bowl where these ones had grown out to the side. So it's much easier for me to judge the length on these. I'm trying to tease these out a bit, but I don't want to damage anything either. But I want to see kind of where they're falling so I have a better idea of how to do the one third. So one of the things you're noticing is that I'm teasing at them, I'm pulling at them, and they're coming up, they're like untangling, but they're not coming off in clumps. One thing that you would notice if these were diseased and if you had root rot, chunks of roots will come out. And the feeling is, you have to touch the roots to know when they're healthy and when they're not, and like just kind of become familiar with it. These ones are great. These ones are healthy. I have touched root rot roots and it's disgusting. You pretty much actually don't even have to trust them because as soon as you lift it up, they just kind of slough off, which is not good. I'm gonna take out some of these lower hanging ones and we'll just see where we get on these. So I'm gonna trim a bit more on those ones. It's on the other side, I'm gonna trim a little bit more aggressively because they are getting over into the pump and into the chives. So I haven't hacked off a huge amount. Actually, you know what, maybe we'll take a bit more. We'll make this kind of even. And while I took off a lot of length, the mass that's here is still primarily there. That's what we took off of the lettuce. So now I'm gonna put this guy back in his home, or guys, I guess, cause there's two of them. And we'll leave it for probably another two weeks to a month and I'll check back in with you guys and see if he's still good. Or if I've doomed him to an early death. I don't think so. He's looking pretty good. He was good in dinner last night. So I'll check back with you guys in a little bit. Root trimming update. Definitely have some tip burn on here. I only just got the fan going. This was on the side that we did not trim. This was the side that we did. Not really seeing any differences. The chives at the back are doing quite good on both the roots. This is the non-trimmed and this is the trimmed. In terms of water, I kept trying to see was I using less water and I really, for a little bit, it seemed like maybe I was putting a bit more water in here, but then I felt like the next time I had to put a bit more water in this one. So far, what I would definitely say is it doesn't seem to have done anything negative. I don't know that it seems to be making all that much difference other than obviously there is less root volume in that one, which would then keep it out of the pumps a little bit better, but definitely not really seeing any negatives to this other than just just making sure that you have a good set of pruners and that you are properly cleaning them so that you don't introduce disease. But so far it seems like a viable option. Will I do it? 
not really sure. I feel like it's more necessary if it's in an aero garden because the pumps tend to be right there in the way so it's easier to get the roots stuck in them. If I was doing it say over here in my rise garden where the pump is underneath and completely out of the way I probably wouldn't bother unless I really saw that the roots were taking over. I do think the one thing that is really important about it is it teaches you about checking on your roots and root health. For that reason it's a good check because you're constantly going to be looking at them there's more of a chance that you're going to notice root rot or any other issues that might be developing sooner that said there's also the potential that you introduce an issue because you're in there mucking about with the roots so we're going to give this a little bit longer all right these guys have had their haircuts i've tidied them up and this will be the final test to see how this guy recovers because he was the one that had his roots trimmed and just see if there's any different in its ability to recover Okay, so it has been another week. The non-root trimmed has grown back from its cutting and so has the root trimming. Definitely seeing regrowth on both, which is a good sign. Before we close this off, I thought it would be good just to show you kind of how much the roots had recovered and what the final root mass was. So this is the one where I did not root trim and look at that, I can't even get it out and the roots are all wrapped around pump many more roots on that one versus the root trimming guy where the roots were much smaller they're not trapped around the pump they're still decent and they've grown back but they are definitely more controlled than over here so now this experiment is pretty much done i'm going to eat the lettuce for dinner and the garlic chives will get transplanted into soil and then will go out into the outdoor garden as soon as it is civilized outside. If you want to know how to transplant your plants from an arrow garden into soil, I will put the link up above to my video on exactly how I do that. So as we approach the end of this not exactly scientific experiment, I just wanted to share with you guys my thoughts on root trimming and will I be doing it or not moving forward. I didn't notice a big difference in the uptake of water. That said, I was not measuring it out and in hindsight, I probably should have been to see how much water each side consumed. But when I was filling it up, it felt like pretty much the same. So there was definitely not a drastic difference in the amount of water that each one used. I also didn't see a huge difference in the size of the plants. One thing I did note is that in the one that I was not trimming, it did originally have two plants in the lettuce, which I had tried to prevent, but didn't. Uh, and I didn't really notice until it was a little further along that other plant ended up kind of dying off anyways. So it ended up being one and one, but it wasn't an equal start. There was obviously less root volume in the side that had the trimming. So if you are having issues with the roots getting into the pumps, then it might be a good idea to do the root trimming. After I did the haircut harvest right across the top, both plants recovered and they continued to produce leaves and they continued to grow. Which brings us to the question, am I going to root trim? The answer is maybe. I feel like it's much more useful for people that have aero gardens because the pump tends to be right in there where the roots are growing. In terms of the rise garden, with the pump being completely separate and down in a lower reservoir, I probably wouldn't just because the roots aren't really causing an issue. As with anything in gardening and growing, there's never a hard and fast answer. The irony is it's easier to get to the roots in the rise garden than I think that it is in the arrow garden, but I still think the root trimming is probably a better idea for people with an arrow garden, especially if the roots are getting tangled. What I will be doing with all of my systems is putting a reminder in probably every two weeks, maybe every month, no, probably every two weeks to take a look to see if there's any root rot to see if there's any um, indications of issues that are starting to make sure there's no gray mold forming to make sure the roots aren't getting too close to the pump if i saw that there was any issues then i would definitely be trimming off any diseased parts of the roots but if I saw that the root mass was just getting too big or getting close to any of the pumps, then I would, without hesitation, go ahead and trim the roots. Just remember, if you are going to do it, make sure that you are not getting close to that root crown and don't be taking off more than about a third of the root mass. And 
just keep an eye on your plant babies. If you're thinking about getting a rise garden, I'll put my link on the screen where you can save $50. There will also be a link in the description that will take you directly to the site with the coupon code included. If you have any other suggestions for other experiments that I should do in my two air garden sprouts, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And if you're not quite ready to get one and you're curious if it's worth the money, you can check out my video over here on whether or not I think the rise garden is worth the money. And if you are an air garden newbie, you can check out my video up here about some of the tips that I think would be good for you to know. So I really hope that you guys found this video helpful and until next time, don't forget to enjoy the little things and go out there and make food grow. Bye guys.